This is a 3D printer. And with a 3D printer, you can make a whole bunch of stuff. Anything from decorative items to really practical things. And it's completely changed the way I tackle a problem. From customizing organization to making jigs, the possibilities seemed endless. But it wasn't always easy to get started. This here is the Zortrax M200. And it was actually given to me by a friend. But before he parted waves with it, he gave me a one hour tutorial on the different issues I'd probably be facing and what I should do to fix it. Not gonna lie, it was pretty overwhelming. So much so that I never set it up. But thanks to advances in 3D printing technology, this is no longer the case. And 3D printing is actually pretty simple now. And the best thing about it is, you can deep dive into 3D modeling to make custom designs, but thanks to the amazing community of enthusiasts out there, chances are somebody has already thought of the solution. So with these advances, is it worth the time and the money to start 3D printing? Well, here is my 3D printing journey so far. I wanna show you guys how I've been using 3D printing as well as the tools that I wish I found out about earlier because it would have saved me a whole bunch of time. So day one of my 3D printing journey began when the Prusa Core 1 arrived at my doorstep. And thank you to Prusa for sending this printer out to me. No money exchanged hands and Prusa was more than happy for me to use the printer and share my unfiltered thoughts about the machine. But this video does have a sponsor, Level 8. Recently I took a trip to the mountains for a bit of skiing, which is why I teamed up with Level 8 to showcase their Grace carry-on luggage. The Grace Carry-On is a great option for short weekend getaways or business trips where you want to prioritize efficient storage and getting around smoothly. The Carry-On features two compartments. There's plenty of room to carry your clothes and gear with the main compartment coming in at 36 liters of capacity. But if you want a bit of extra space, you can expand the Carry-On via the zips outside, giving you an extra six liters of space. You can also keep your gear organized with the tie-down straps, pockets, and separators inside. There's also a secondary compartment to house your smaller items, and it's held together with two Velcro tabs, which lets you open it partially while the carry-on is vertical, or completely open when the carry-on is lying flat. Inside, there's a compartment for your laptop and tablet, as well as smaller pockets for any of your other tech accessories. Not only that, but there's a giant hidden compartment behind your laptop. Coming in at four kilos or 8.8 .8 pounds, the Grace Carry-On has a telescopic handle and smooth wheels for quick maneuverability, as well as a tough external hard shell to keep your gear protected. Your gear is kept safe with a TSA approved combination lock fitted to the main compartment and Level 8 even provides an additional TSA lock for that secondary compartment. If you want to check out the Grace Carry-On, I'll leave a link in the video description. Alright, setting up the Core 1 was really fast and simple with only three major steps involved. This is because I've got the pre-assembled version, but if you want to save a bit of cash or if you love to tinker around with the printer, Prusa does give you an option of ordering a disassembled kit that you can build yourself as well. But for someone who wants to jump straight into 3D printing like me, the assembled version is perfect. Like I said, just three major steps after I got the printer out of the box, all I had to do was attach the rubber feet, attach the control panel, run the auto calibration, and the printer was good to go. And I was excited to get things going, but I needed a model to print off. Luckily for me, there are platforms available where the 3D printing community has shared their designs. Some of the most popular being Printables and Maker World. These websites are actually run by Prusa and Bamboo Labs who are manufacturers of 3D printers. And it's kind of like a 3D printing social media. So users can upload their designs and other people can then rate and comment on them. And you'll often find other people leaving comments on their own experiences printing the design, including problems that they may have faced and recommendations on how to solve them. So um, it's a pretty great community. I spent the rest of the night browsing through the websites and saving interesting prints. And uh, it's definitely overwhelming how much stuff there is out there, but it's kind of a good thing because it means the community is so active. So 
So it wasn't until day two that I had some models ready to go and I was going to make my first print. I also picked up some filament from the local store and my filament of choice was some eSun PLA Plus. eSun's PLA Plus comes in at a pretty reasonable price and seems to have a pretty good reputation for bed adhesion and strength. So the first thing I did was jump into some practical prints. I was interested in using 3D printing as a tool to help me with my organization and to improve my workflows. So I wanted to find a better way to manage my IKEA Alex drawers. The Alex drawers are a great piece of kit because they're affordable, offer a bunch of vertical storage, and they're on caster wheels, which I love because it means flexibility. But I will admit, since I purchased them, I haven't really been utilizing the space all that well. So this is the setup I have going on inside of these Alex drawers. I'm using these dividers that are also from Ikea, but to be honest, they're pretty rubbish. Because of their shape, there's a lot of wasted space and they also just slide around a whole lot. So I'm going to reorganize the Alex drawers using the famous Gridfinity system. What's Gridfinity? Well, it's probably the most used community design out there. It's an open source system that was designed by this guy. Zach Friedman, and it uses these base plates that have this grid pattern, which holds these boxes that can be used for storage. Both the grids and boxes can be easily printed off, and they're very easy to customize to suit whatever you need to store. Unfortunately, the base plates don't tessellate perfectly into the Alex drawer, but since the Alex drawers are available worldwide, other users have already designed these base plates that have these spaces on the side. So when you put them in the drawers, they'll fit nicely and they won't move around. So printing off these bases was as simple as downloading the models, slicing them with Prusa Slicer, and then sending the code to the core one wirelessly through Prusa Link. By the way, Prusa Link works on the local network without having to connect to any third party services. That means no messing around with accounts. This really beats having to take the USB back and forth to your computer, especially if you're making multiple little adjustments to your print. The Core 1 also has modern features like auto bed leveling, which meant I didn't have to make adjustments. So it was really easy to get started. I just told the printer to print and it just did it. But I did notice there was quite a bit of vibration happening with some of the prints. It didn't really affect the prints themselves. I didn't see any artifacts, but I was worried how these vibrations would affect the printer in the long run. So I cleared out the sit stand desk and it became the printer's new home. Okay, so I moved the printer over to a sit-stand desk and vibrations have dropped significantly, which is giving me much better peace of mind. So I definitely recommend a solid base for the Prusa Core 1. Each one of these plates takes around one hour to print. So while the printer was hard at work, I set out to plan my drawers layout. The first step to setting up the drawer was figuring out which items I wanted to store. My goal was to chuck as much stuff as I could in here without overcrowding the drawer. With my stuff selected, I used one of the completed base plates to help me figure out how many blocks I'd need for each item. And I blocked out the grid that was available for the drawer to figure out how I was going to fit everything, with frequently used items at the front of the drawer and not so frequently used items at the back where it's a bit harder to reach, especially because these drawers don't open up all the way. When it came to the boxes themselves, I saved a bit of time where I could by using designs that were available online since Gridfinity was an open source system. But for things that were a bit more specific, like my random assortment of SSDs, I had to model them myself. For this, I went down the route of using Fusion 360. I had a bit of experience with the program already, and there's this great community add-on that lets you create the boxes in just a couple clicks, allowing me to specify the size, add holes for magnets, as well as including a lip for stackability. Certain items like my knife and tape measures fit perfectly into standard size Gridfinity boxes. So it was just a matter of specifying the length, width and height of the boxes. This saves a lot of time, but for a really nice custom look, I also designed some shadow boxes using a caliper to get the dimensions of my items and then subtracting the cutouts from the Gridfinity boxes. For weeder shaped items, I used a website called Tooltrace. And I kind of wish I found out about this sooner because it saved me a lot of time. It's a free to use website where you can upload a photo of your tools with a piece of paper for a size reference. And it creates a Gridfinity shadow box for you in just a couple clicks. It's not perfect, you can't choose the size of the box, 
but it does export an STL file for both the box and the shape of your tools, so you can edit it in Fusion 360 for more flexibility. And just as I was finishing up a few of the boxes, there was a small hiccup. I wasn't a fan of eSun's PLA Plus filament in gray. Okay, so I'm a few prints into setting up my Griffinity draw, and I gotta say, I'm not the biggest fan of eSun's gray PLA filament. It's got this blue tinge to it, which I don't think looks very nice. Purely a personal preference thing, but I think I'm gonna have to pick up some new filament. So I ended up going back to the store and picking up some Eligu PLA Plus, which I'm hoping will come out a bit nicer. From a practical standpoint, I do recommend using gray filament for your storage because it contrasts most tech, which usually comes in black or white, making stuff much easier to spot. It's at this point that I started experimenting with ironing to get smoother prints. I printed off one of these test sheets to help me dial in the flow rate and print speed for the best results. Oh, and by the way, I recommend printing yourself one of these round scrapers as well. I was experimenting with a bunch of different scrapers before this, but the sharp edges on all of them left some pretty nasty marks on the surface of the print sheet. Anyway, I'm still experimenting with the ironing settings, but you can see ironing does result in a much smoother print surface. I'm not going to lie to you, designing and printing out all of these boxes takes a really long time, but I'm hoping the end result will be worth it. We'll just have to wait and see when it's all done. But I want to quickly say, only 2% of my viewers are subscribed to this channel, so do me a solid. If you're watching, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Okay. It's the next day now. Um, the printer is just warming up for its next print. Um, I didn't have a way to automate getting stuff off the print bed, like some of those elite level print farms. So I didn't have it running overnight, but now it's back up and running, um, printing off some Griffinity boxes. Um, and while it's doing that, I think I might want to incorporate some 3D prints into another ecosystem. All right, for day five and six, I wanted to build a mini workshop setup next to the printer. So I repurposed a Muji bookshelf from a previous desk setup. The cool thing about this bookshelf is that I can hang an IKEA Scatters pegboard from its cross bracing. So the plan for the pegboard was to make it a spot to hold my tools for 3D printing, while also incorporating a horizontal charging station to have available in the room. For the tools, it was easy enough. Just like the Alex drawers, the Scatters pegboard is available worldwide, which means there are plenty of community designs to choose from. I'm gonna be using these tool holders, this bin for longer items, and these arms to hold spare spools of filament. I also modeled this simple shelf to hold some screwdrivers. For the charging station, I decided to take a more personal approach. Taking measurements for my chargers, I designed these brackets to attach them to the pegboard. I also wanted to print off some hooks where I can store these magnetic cables when not in use. And last but not least, I also modeled some brackets to hold some chargers for my camera batteries. And it was at this time that my last Gridfinity box had finished printing. This here is the final piece to my Gridfinity draw, but I wanted to talk about these cutouts on the side of the printer real quick. So the cutout to the right has a spool holder and it's also where you feed the filament into the printer. I think it's pretty smart using that space because it keeps the whole setup way more compact, but there are some downsides. Because the space inside the printer is so narrow, uh, you have to be really careful when you're removing the build plate because it's really easy to bang it up against the sides of the printer. Still, I do appreciate the space savings. All right, now with the final piece slotted into place, the draw is complete. And I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. It's so satisfying to see the drawer filled out in such a clean way. Everything now has a place to return to, and this also makes things way easier to spot the things I need. The beauty of this system is, I can even move the boxes as things change over time. Maybe I'll buy new tools, maybe I'll realize I don't need some of this stuff. It's all flexible. Day seven is when I began printing off accessories for the Scatters pegboard. And I also turned my attention to the next area that could use with some improvement using 3D prints, my desk setup. This time I want to incorporate other stuff into the prints such as magnets and other accessories. The first thing that needed an upgrade was a stand for my AirPod Maxes. 
The AirPod Maxes are a great pair of headphones, but to this day, I don't know why Apple came out with this goofy looking case, which is also the only way to put it to sleep, meaning most of the time the AirPods just sit awake and drain its own battery. But I found a couple of prints that could fix this. You see, by adding a pause during the print, this design lets me put magnets into the print. These magnets will then trick the AirPods into thinking they're inside the goofy case, meaning they'll go to sleep. Now, for a print like this, it's important to get magnets with enough strength to affect the AirPods. So I found a local store that sold magnets, which strangely enough, also doubled as a rug store. But the guy who ran the store was honestly so helpful and passionate about magnets that I just have to give Mike from FastMag a shout out. By the time I got back from the shop, the final pieces of my Scatus accessories had finished up. Setting it up was a bit of trial and error. I didn't plan this out as much as the Gridfinity boxes, so it was just a matter of figuring things out on the fly. Eventually, I came to a setup I was happy with, and it's the perfect setup for easy access to my tools. Of course, as a tech enthusiast, I have a whole bunch of stuff that needs charging. So the vertical charging station gives me a super convenient way to keep things topped up and ready to go. All right. That is only my first seven days of 3D printing, and I think it's been a pretty big improvement in my organization. A huge advantage of 3D printing is its customizability, so you can use it to create solutions for your exact setup. Does it take a lot of time? Well, if you're trying to squeeze out the most optimal setup, then yes. But thanks to improvements in the reliability of printers and the huge community that has built up around it, it takes way less time than it used to. And the results after everything's been organized is so satisfying. So is 3D printing worth it? Yeah, I think it is. Anyway, this is definitely not the end. There's a whole bunch of prints I want to incorporate into my desk setup. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. Also, make sure to let me know what kind of cool stuff you guys have been printing in the comments below.